For me, kayak fishing is simple. A boat, a paddle, a fishing rod, and unspoiled water. The fish are big. Chaos is beautiful. It's angling's addictive final frontier, and I'm hooked. I'm Drew Gregory, and this is Hooked on Wild Waters. Drew Gregory's Hooked on Wild Waters has been brought to you by Jackson Kayak. We make fun. Z-Man Lures, the science and art of fishing. Bending branches, pretty smart paddles. Because in the beginning, there were rivers. It's a tagline I've used for so many years. However, once we became a more industrialized society, we began to change these rivers to make them work for us. A big part of that was damming of so many flows across this country. It buried the true wild waters below, but it helped us grow to have all the modern day pleasures that we enjoy today. The fish have adapted, and even though a lot of true wild water is now submerged, you can't stop the continuation of wild waters that occurs just downstream of these engineering marvels. Fishing below dams can be the best of times or the worst of times. And actually, it can be quite a challenge to physically get right below these dams where the fishing can be really good. And if you think about it, you can't necessarily float from upstream to downstream because then you may have to portage the dam. Or the, the put-in could be downstream of the dam and now it's too difficult to get yourself all the way back upstream below the dam. One way to get up to the dams is actually to get out of your kayak and wade. It's great exercise. You just gotta make sure you keep one hand on your kayak or tether your kayak and, and clip it to your shorts because obviously you don't wanna lose that. It's gonna be an important piece of the puzzle for you to get back downstream. So once you get up there, you can park your kayak on a rock. You know, if you feel safe that it's there, it's not gonna float away. Even though the sound is just incredibly loud and very distracting, you just gotta focus and relax and enjoy the time because believe me, it can be a real good time below these dams. I didn't have much luck right against the dam. And a lot of times, uh, shoal bass or largemouth bass, all different black bass species, they move throughout the year. In the spring, they might be stacked up below the dam, but now it's summer and they're just not there. I can't find them. So I'm working my way downstream a little bit, making some casts in the shoals, you know, seeing where the turtles are popping up in these calm pockets and throwing in there. Sure enough, I hooked something that I've never hooked on Hooked on Wild Waters before, a turtle. I hooked it in the leg on accident. I brought it in, it was a huge turtle. But again, I'm throwing where turtles are always popping up their heads. There's calm spots everywhere. So it's just a secret. You wanna throw where the turtles are, that's where the fish are gonna be hiding too. I knew a little bit about these dams, but I don't know the whole story. So I wanted to find someone that does, so you and I can learn together about these dams that we see all over the country. I got in touch with Dawson Ingram from Georgia Power. He's gonna tell us a little bit more about the history on these dams, why they were built, and just some general information that's gonna help us learn about our wild waters. So behind me is Crow Hop, which is a diversion dam for Riverview. Riverview was built in 1906, and just upstream is Langdale. It was built in 1908. These two dams, were built by West Point. It was essentially for mill or textiles. Um, and during that time, they generated power to power the actual mill. Dams like this are mill dams, smaller dams, really looking at across the country at, at options or looking at ways to remove those because of opening up stream systems. They block habitat for fish in this area, such as shoal bass, which we have a great population in this middle Chattahoochee area, but removing dams like this will help provide better opportunity for shoal bass to migrate and move, as well as other fish such as striped bass um, and other species that use a river system. I feel the Chattahoochee River is Georgia's most valuable natural resource. Georgia has a number of, of rivers and streams, and the majority of them all start in the state of Georgia. Chattahoochee starts in North Georgia. Here you're looking at the middle section uh, and it flows all the way to Apalachicola Bay. 
Along the Chattahoochee River, we have a series of lakes, as well as public access points that Georgia Power manages. Just downstream from here is Blanton Creek Campground, where we have a nice full campground facility for RVs, tent camping, as well as other restrooms and showers. Public access from a day use standpoint, we have ramps uh, at Blanton Creek, as well as downstream on the Alabama and Georgia side. You can learn more about our public access facilities and ways to, to recreate on Georgia Power lakes and land through georgiapowerlakes.com. This area I'm fishing actually has a much larger dam upstream. It actually holds back a lake called West Point Lake. It's right on the border basically of Georgia and Alabama. And they release water from this lake often. And today they definitely kicked it up a notch. And now the water is swift, it's high, and most people want to get off the water when this happens. Fortunately, I've got good paddle skills, I've done this enough, I have good experience in the water, and I also know a, a little fact, a little secret here that you guys probably want to know. Fish eat a lot better when the water is running than when it's down. I mean, it may be clearer when it's down low, and it may be more enjoyable for us, but they're feeding when the water is moving and running. So I'm excited that the water is up, even though it's going to be a challenge for me. And as I'm moving downstream, there's just only limited pockets that these fish can hang out in. I throw one over there, got a TRD, crawls on the back of a cross size jig, and I'm just working it through these limbs, these logs, and all of a sudden this big largemouth comes up and just nails it. Oh, there she is, there she is. Oh, she's still on, but she's stuck on a log. Shoot, I can see her, she's still on. I feel her, she's still hooked. And now the fight is on, right? It's just kind of crazy. I'm getting pulled downstream, this fish is back upstream, and it actually gets hooked on a log. So now I'm just basically at a standstill with this fish, but I can see it's still on the line. Stay on. Just kind of pull myself slowly to this fish. She's hooked on this log. I can't really paddle with one hand, it's just too swift, but I can pull myself with the line. Oh, there she goes, she freed herself, sort of. Oh, I'm still hung. It's like the line's caught in the bark. Ugh. Ugh. Get off, there we go. Not a bad fish too. All right. Woohoo! Nice. Well, that was a wild fight. That doesn't happen every day on a, a still body water, only in a river, only in a wild place. Well, I'm sitting on this pile of logs, and that's exactly where this largemouth bass was hanging out. And I was just burning this, this jig, basically just swimming it super fast with the new TRD crawls on it. And she came out and hammered it. And as you saw, the fight was something that you only get on a river, only in a wild place like this. It was crazy. It's what I like to call beautiful chaos, and it's one of the reasons. I love fishing wild waters, but I hate it when it's happening. It's like, it's like, oh, I'm gonna lose this fish, it's crazy, but obviously, when you land them, it's just all that much better. Nice fish, too. Almost three pounds, probably. I've been wanting to get my good friend, Chris Funk, on the water with me, because he's a guy who really knows how to enjoy wild waters. I had to prove that I could catch a critter. <laughs> Fortunately, we were able to get on the water for a couple hours and do some fishing, in which Chris actually landed this really, really nice shoal bass, probably in the four pound class, a true trophy fish, and another reason people love to fish on the Chattahoochee River. Yes! <laughs> Man, what a pretty brown bass. That shoaly is, is just incredible. Such a strong, such a beautiful fish. Smack that little old jig, what a fight, what a beautiful fish. Just gravy topping to a great day. I'm gonna let you go. You go be a blessing to somebody else. Y'all know I love fishing, and I know you're watching this because you love fishing. But guys, there's just so much more to offer when you're out in a kayak. I mean, the, the, the ospreys we've seen this morning on this stretch, I've seen you know multiple otters feeding. I, there's just so many cool things. And that's, that's what I love about this, is I get to bring the camera along and I get to share it with people that, that don't get out and see this. I mean, I've got people that live in this area that have no clue that there are bald eagles that live right here near us. And I get to show them that kind of stuff with my camera. And that's one of the neatest things to me about the plastic boats. The stealthiness, you know, they're relatively inexpensive compared to big bass boats and big aluminum boats. I can get it on the water in very little time, like after I've been on night shift all night long, I can put it in the water and go fish for a little while, go shoot for a little while, whatever I want to do. The plastic boat to me is just a godsend, and, and I, I've, I've had more fun in these goofy little plastic vehicles than anything I've ever had in my entire life. 
you have to look for current breaks when the water's high. And one of the best current breaks there is, especially when all the rocks are submerged, is going to be the backside of islands. The area I'm fishing is just scattered with islands. So you gotta work your way up and around all these islands. Make sure to hit the backside and fish are always hanging out there. I make a few casts on the backside of this one island and sure enough, I get a bite and I'm fighting this fish and I'm not sure what it is yet, but all of a sudden it looks kind of weird. It's either a really big long fish or there's two fish there. And sure enough, I look down and there's a spot of bass on my line followed by another spot of bass that's even bigger. I quickly throw out my other rod the best I can. I got two rods going. I'm just, I'm like working a puppet here trying to just get this other fish to bite. I promise you, it's actually not that hard to do. If you have a second fish there with an aggressive species like a, an Alabama bass or spotted bass, smallmouth or shoal bass, you can catch them. If you have a second rod there with a soft plastic bait or a jig, something like that, you can just pitch out. And then you can dangle the, the one fish in the direction towards the other lure and they'll hit it. I've got old GoPro footage proving it. Trust me, I've caught two fish at a time many times. Just a little tip to keep in the back of your mind, especially when the fish following it is bigger than the one on your line. This is pretty exciting. We've had a shoal bass, largemouth, you know, we're catching all different species and now an Alabama spotted bass. I'm tucked way back in these trees. The current's really high, it's moving. People are afraid of that. The better paddler you become, you can fish water like this. And trust me, they are very aggressive. And let this thing go. Look, she just absolutely smoked that jig all the way down her throat. It's so good to know that there are large agencies and corporations out there like Georgia Power that are doing so much for our rivers. They're so invested, but no one's more invested than the nonprofits, the grassroots folks out there like the Chattahoochee River Conservancy. I was able to talk to Henry Jackson with the Chattahoochee River Conservancy about what they do and why they're important to our wild waters. Uh, this resource is incredibly valuable from a urban standpoint and from a recreation standpoint. There are you know, there's 10, 20 million people that rely on this resource for their drinking water, but there's also a ton of people out there that rely on it for recreation like fishing and kayaking. So what we do at Chattahoochee River Conservancy is everything we can to take care of this natural resource. We focus on restoring native plants, restoring native fish like the shoal bass, uh, removing invasive species like hydrilla and spotted bass, and then we check on the water quality from time to time and make sure everything's good to go there too. So if you love the Chattahoochee River and you want to get involved with what we do or just find out more information, go to ChattahoocheeRiverConservancy.org. There's links there to become a member or to donate to the organization because we are a nonprofit. I finally made my way down to the second dam on the float trip. This is actually a dam that the locals call Crow Hop. It's another just giant, you know, mill dam, diversion dam, if you will. It's, it's made to steer water on a different channel to go to the old mill. But I'm just excited because, you know, the portage was difficult, but now that I've done it, I just have all this kind of virgin water to myself, right below this dam, all these pools and rocks and shoals. And I've caught so many species along the way. That's the beauty of the Chattahoochee River. It's so diverse. And if you think about it, I've already caught a largemouth bass, spotted bass, uh, even a chain pickerel, a red breast, catfish, Chris Funk's shoal bass, and I caught some small ones too. Just tons of different species, even a turtle. It's like the Atlantic Ocean out there. There's no telling what you're gonna pull up when you throw your line out in this Chattahoochee River. Fishing has been a little bit challenging, you know, other than this morning, you know, Chris got the big shoal bass, I got a nice largemouth, but the sun got high and hot, it's just been tough. But now we've made it below another dam, and I got a good feeling now these clouds and, you know, in the sky late in the day, we might get a striped bass here, a big shoal bass, we could catch anything here. The biggest striped bass stack up here in the spring, so I doubt we'll catch a monster, but if we happen to get one, it's still going to fight hard and be a ton of fun, so let's get to it. I'm casting below this dam into all the different pockets that are created by the spillway, by the waterfall, basically. And you can see there's current breaks everywhere. So many rocks are exposed and some just underneath the surface. And you can tell when you see those calm bubbles, or again, if you see turtles popping up, you want to throw there. But I actually like to hit the subtle pockets because a lot of times fish will be hiding there too. Just the ones that are just wide enough where you can only see, you know, one or two fish even having room to, to sit there, hang there out of the current in order to feed. Now throw a spinnerbait up into one of those subtle ones around a bunch of real, real swift rapids. Oh, fish on! Feels like a good one, fish on! I don't know what it is. You don't have no clue what it could be in this river. 
shoal bass, striped bass. Just told me all around though. Oh, come here. Oh, come on, fish. Come here, come here. It's a striper. It's a striper. It's a nice one. Eight or nine pounds. Here she is. Woo! That is what we came for. What an adventure here on the Chattahoochee River. We've caught so many different species today. Chris Funk with the huge shoal bass. I thought this was a huge shoal bass, but instead I'll take it. A big seven, eight pound striper to end the day. I mean, I got pulled hundreds of yards downstream. That was a crazy wild fight. And learning about the dams and this river in general, it really is an incredible fishery and a place you gotta go visit because clearly you can see why I'm hooked on wild waters. Drew Gregory's Hooked on Wild Waters has been brought to you by River Bassin Tournament Trail. No egos, just fun. Jackson Kayak, we make fun. GoPro, be a hero. Bending branches, pretty smart paddles. Orion Coolers, never lose your cool. 13 Fishing, make your own luck. Z-Man Lures, the science and art of fishing.